Joining us right now with his squawk picks is Ryan Payne, the president of Payne Capital Management. And Ryan, it's good to see you. Hey, Becky, great to see you this morning. How do you feel just about going over 29,000? I know it's a milestone that we kind of mark off. Does it matter to you? Um, I mean, it's just a number, and I think that I was so bullish last year that I've kind of expected things to go up a lot higher than most people probably did last year. So I guess it's expected for me, and I think the Dow's going to go even higher this year. Higher than 29,000 by how much? What, what are your gains you're looking for this year? Because last year was a really strong year. Yeah, you know, I mean, typically what you see after a really strong year like last year, a 20% plus return is at least a double digit return this year. So I'm not surprised if we get 10% plus again this year, which okay. is probably bold versus most. Wall Street it strategists. It's a little more. Most of them say a mid to, to high single digit range. Yeah, I mean, but you're looking for stronger than that. Exactly right. So hopefully I'll be right again, but we'll see how things pan out. Let's talk about some of your spot stock picks. Your first one is JP Morgan. It came out with earnings this week, much better than had been anticipated, kind of blew things out of the water. Why are you picking this stock now? Because a lot of people have been flocking to it for a while. If stock's already up 40%, uh, they blow out earnings to your point. So I think the one thing they didn't do really well last year were net interest margins weren't great just because you had the flat yield curve. Remember talking well, about that's that in, not changing, right? Well, I mean, we talked about that inverted yield curve all summer, and then no one talked about it anymore. I was going to cry if I had to talk about it one more time. <laughs> um, but I think what you're going to see this year is global growth starting to pick up. Um, you're already starting to see those negative interest rates across the globe start to, start to rise again. Negative interest rates are going down or becoming positive again. So I think you're going to see the 10-year Treasury go up again, which means you'll see a steeper yield curve. So those net interest margins, my guess, are going to start to go up, and that'll be a surprise to the positive for their earnings moving forward. Okay, let's talk about your second pick, Chevron, one of the big oil companies. Yes. And the last decade has not been good to the big oil companies. Why <laughs> do you think this one's going to be better? Because I think now, again, with global growth picking up, you have the trade deal in place. I think China's going to start to need more oil. They're going to see more imports coming in, so prices should go up. And Chevron should really benefit from that. Every dollar that goes up for oil is $450,000 to their bottom line on an annual basis. <laughs> They're lean and mean. You know, they brought their costs down by like $20 billion over the last five years. So they're well positioned for higher oil prices just because they've kept their costs so low. How, how does that match up to, let's say, an Exxon Mobil? Um, I mean, I like Exxon as well, um, but I do like the fact that they've really kept the cost control in place uh, over at Chevron. And I like that dividend, too. It's, it's at 4 percent. They've actually increased their dividend for 32 years in a row. And from a cash flow perspective, they're funding all their dividends and stock buybacks all with cash flow, not from debt. So for all those reasons, I'm, I like Chevron a little bit better right, and lower, Larry, lower P.E. Larry Fink from BlackRock out this week talking about sustainability and how he's going to be looking as an investor for sustainability. Does that hurt a company like Chevron? I think they can all probably be doing better in that aspect, and I think they're all trying to make positive steps forward in that, so that's going to be a headwind. But I think the bottom line is, look, we're energy dependent across right. the globe. Uh, energy prices are probably going to go up because demand's going up, and these stocks have been beaten up so much, or have been sideways at least, uh, that I think you have to buy them right now and you know, take advantage of the low multiples before oil prices go higher. Okay, let's look at Caterpillar. That's your third pick. And I like that you have three big, well-known stocks that you're actually saying to buy. Because a lot of people have said, look, stay away from the ones that have done well or stay away from the big-name ones. You've got to find other places. Why do you like Caterpillar right now? Does it have anything to do with the trade deal? I think everything to do with the trade deal, right? No one benefits more than Caterpillar. Um, and you're already starting to see, like, you know, China, for instance, we probably have seen a trough last year with manufacturing slowing down. It's starting mm -hmm. to pick up. Uh, their demand for you know, everything, every, every, every demand that China has is great for manufacturing around the world. Everyone benefits from that. Pressure, uh, if you look at industrial metals, they're going up. Mining is a big part of their business. Um, agriculture, another big thing with this China trade deal, they're going to be buying $200 billion worth of agriculture from the U.S. That means more agriculture products uh, have to, or more you know, machinery has to be bought. So for all those reasons, I think Caterpillar is going to be a huge, huge catalyst for Caterpillar. Stock. But your entire thesis on all these stocks is that the global economy is going to pick up this year, and that is going to lift all these boats. That's correct. So I try to tie everything back to the trade deal. I find three stocks that were directly or indirectly going to be positively impacted. And I have to say at this point, I think everything's been priced to the fact that now, last year, manufacturing slowed down. So I think this year, the big surprise is going to be that the global economy is going to pick up more than has been expected, because the world's already priced to the fact that it's not going to do anything. All right. From your lips, we'll see what happens. <laughs> Ryan, thank you very much. It's great to see you. Great. Thank you, Becky. Mm -hmm.